Oh, it was a compass. I'm gonna die alone in the woods. All right, I have to say, you guys got me on the compass thing. True enough, it's a compass. I think it's a compass. And it's kind of like when you go to watch those murder mysteries and at the end of the movie you're like, oh, he was dead the whole time. And that's why the little kid could see him. M. Night Shyamalan. So because you guys were so awesome, I thought it might be time for story time. Here it goes. Picture this. It's spring, early spring, and B and I have arrived at a campsite. It's Friday, and we get there, we get the tents unpacked, it's getting dark. We didn't plan to go early enough, it was a farther drive. We stopped and grabbed some sandwiches so we wouldn't have to cook. We unpack, we put up our tents, it started to get dark. We turned on our car lights. She has a truck, I have an SUV. We've got the lights so we can like at least get our tents up for the night. We get our chairs out, we're very comfortable. We get everything in, we blow up our mattresses, do everything we need to do and we're like, we're good, let's get our lanterns out turn off these lights so we don't hurt our batteries and enjoy some sandwiches and then light that fire and, and just have a great time. So we turn the lights off, we get our lanterns, we grab our sandwiches, which I do believe they were subs from Subway if I remember correctly. And we sit down at the picnic table. Now, usually in state parks, there is a picnic table, a fire pit, and then if you're really lucky, there's this pole where you can hang your lantern on. This particular park did not have the pole, but it did have the fire pit and it did have uh, the picnic table. So we sat at the picnic table and we had her lantern and we had my lantern. So while we were eating, we kept hearing rattling noises in the dark because the lanterns, if they're not up high, they don't deliver a wide area of light. The lower they are, the smaller the area. And it was covering the table nicely, but it wasn't covering the surrounding areas. And we kept hearing rustling like in the bushes. Now, my best friend, B, she's a tough gal. And she carries a, like a stick that she uses to poke the fire and all that kind of stuff. And so she would just kind of rattle it a little bit toward the bushes and, you know, shout like, hey, over there. Um, and then it would get quiet for a little while. Well, she finished her dinner first. And I, I thought, well, I'm not quite finished, but I'll wrap it up real quickly. And I'm gonna run to the tent and get my phone, get the fire started, and then I'll finish my sandwich. So we quickly put our chairs facing the fire and B went to go get some of the firewood. When we decided to move the lamps, it created a wider area and there were all these pairs of eyes all around us. There were a lot of raccoons. And when I say a lot, I mean like it was the whole, I don't know, like insert, insert name for raccoon here, it was the whole Mr. Raccoon's family. His wife, his children, the cousins, the, the 12 babies that were just born, I mean, they were all there to say hello. And it was a little overwhelming to be surrounded by that many. Well, B, having her stick, just kind of tapped it along the table and the ground, and they kind of scattered. 
And then she left me. She left me. Like in Jurassic Park, when that lawyer like leaves, she totally left me by myself. I'm not that grown. I'm not that mature to be left by myself with that many raccoons wandering around. So she goes to get the rest of the kindling or the fire starter. or I can't even remember. I was so traumatized. I don't even remember what she was getting at this point. But she's gone. And I sit in my chair and I've got the lamp right beside me. And I decide to open my sandwich back up and finish it because she's already done. And I'm ready to just finish my sandwich. And she said, hey, you know, just do your thing and I'm just gonna grab this. And I went, okay, no problem. So I go to take a bite and I hear something very close to me. So I take my lantern and I hold it up and I look this way. And there was a huge raccoon, like he was so big. He was really, he was like a small child size. Okay, maybe not that big, but he was big for a raccoon. He was really big. So I wasn't sure what to do. And I had my sandwich. And he's looking at me like, hey, um, I don't want you to be afraid or anything, but I'm going to get in your lap. <laughs> he was coming up my chair, and he had his little paw reached out. Like, he literally looked like, hey, I'm climbing on up now, so just prepare yourself. And as he was reaching out with his little paw to get on, like he was like, like it was this far, this far from my leg, I'm holding the lantern. And usually I'm really calm about wild animals, but raccoons can be rabid and you really shouldn't have too much contact with them honest and truly and i love them very very much i would love to pick one up and kiss him i think they're just wonderful creatures but seriously a lot of them are rabid and <laughs> you really shouldn't play with them so when i realized he was going to have a wonderful lap moment <laughs> i was holding the lantern and i went um b uh b because <laughs> I didn't have the stick and I couldn't shake anything. I didn't want to make any commotion because if I moved quickly, I could be bit. He really was that close. And just as he was touching my leg to climb up, a bee showed up with her little stick and went, ah, get out of here. And he took off. And then she proceeded to laugh at me for quite a few minutes because he really was on his way up. But I go, I, it's scary. And so she went back and he came back, like very quickly he came back and looked at me like, here's what's going to happen. You're either going to give me that sandwich or I really am going to sit in your lap and I'm going to eat the sandwich in your lap. Baby, you play it how you want to play it, but that's going in my belly. <laughs> He's, he was kind of a gangster raccoon looking back on it so given those options I just gave him the sandwich like I was cool with that at that point in time so the problem with that is there's signs posted everywhere do not feed the raccoons but I kind of felt at that point in time it was survival for me like I just knew that it was me or it was the sandwich and I had to sacrifice the sandwich there wasn't anything else I could do. So I handed it to him. And he literally took his little paws and he grabbed it like, thank you very much. I'm tucking it now and I'm going to go take it to my babies, Tina and Bobby, and have a wonderful camping weekend. But when I went to go give it to him, B turned around and she said, do not feed him. And I got to want to be bitten by him. So she comes running over. He literally ran with the sandwich, what was left of it, tucked under his arms, on three legs. And I'm pretty sure he waved like, later ladies, on his way out. So we learned for the next couple of nights that we stayed there, we had to find ways to hang the lanterns so we could always see. And we had to have something to kind of smack the ground to keep them away. Which does let me know, honestly, that... 
people have been involved with these animals and they've been feeding them. And you really shouldn't. And I'm not condoning what I did. I normally would not feed a wild creature. I'm just here to tell you, I didn't know if it was rabid, but he definitely, definitely knew that he was tougher than I was and he was going to get that sandwich. And well, I just let him have it. So I probably didn't help the situation. I am very sorry about that. I don't know that I would have made a different decision given those circumstances because, well, scary. And there you have it my camping story. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this story. I also wanted to tell you, let's see, I can't even remember how many days it's been since the Louis Vuitton party, and yet I am still carrying... I'm actually kind of impressed. I really love this bag so much. And I thought about changing it a couple of times, actually more than a couple of times, and went, nah, I'm good. I'm just going to keep rocking and rolling with this. It seems to fit my lifestyle very well. Okay, the time has come to dig into the treat box and see what we have from across the pond. I'm actually starting to salivate like Pavlov's dog when I pick this up now. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a treat for me. It's gonna be awesome, and I wag my tail. It's cool. Ooh, let's see, what will it be, what will it be, what will it be? Um, I know. So it's Beaches Fine Chocolate since 1920, traditional fudge in milk chocolate. Now, I know fudge, and I know milk chocolate, but I have don't think I have ever experienced fudge in the milk chocolate. I'm super excited about that. It says that this is made entirely in the UK, which is of course what we've been going for, or like at least not in America, um, at our family owned chocolate factory in Preston, and I think it's Lancashire, L-A-N-C-A-S-H-I-R-E. That's what I'm going with, Lancashire. And if you happen to know that area or know the pronunciation, would you type it phonetically below so I will be prepared uh, to say it correctly the next time or let me know if I got it right? I'd greatly appreciate it. So here we go. Looks like this is the opening right here. There was a plastic thing over it and I took that off. So here we go. Nice little unboxing here. Let's take this piece off. If it will, oh, they almost look like, you know, they're shaped like caramels, like little square things, like you would normally, it's like in, um, like Russell Stover's. All right, so let's, uh, let's take this one out. Don't they look like little caramels? Very cool. Here we go. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my, I have to tell you, this truly is fudge in milk chocolate. Not only do I think these are incredible, I am going to have to take them somewhere tomorrow so this box does not empty at my house. That may very possibly be the most favorite thing that I have eaten on this whole journey. That's really good. Um, what's the family's name? Oh, maybe it's maybe it's Beaches because it's Beaches fine chocolate. Yes. Well, Mr. Beach, I gotta say, you know what you're doing. Good job. Kudos. They might be the oh, they're so good. Hell. Why, well, hello there, darlings. This is Laura Bell's cousin. Tara Bell. I am known world round for wearing scarves because I look so much like Laura Bell. It's the only way to tell us apart. I hear tell that she is going to be doing a fabulous video on Christmas Day, but she needs your help. She wants you to be in her video. She needs you to be in her video. 
Don't worry. It will not be difficult. It will not be hard. Send an email now. Send an email now to her. Lorabellew at gmail.com Get in the video. Be a part of history. You will love it. You will laugh. You will cry. It will move you. Do so now. That is all.